What is up everyone? My name is KG and I'm here with another video. Well, today I'm going to be a little controversial. I'd like to talk to you guys under the subject, Go Deeper Papa, an inquiry into church capture. Long before the advent of COVID-19, South Africa had already been battling a number of social pandemics. One of the most understated yet extremely dangerous of these is false prophets and cultic churches. It goes without saying that South Africa is in a dire state and is ailing in multiple respects. In order to possibly remedy this country, we need a full diagnosis to highlight government corruption without also highlighting other forms of corruption would be an incomplete diagnosis. Similarly, as I stated in another video, only blaming the elite without pointing out the role of society and its own demise is also an incomplete diagnosis. False prophets and cultic churches share a common trait with our government, and that is both have been taking advantage of an ignorant population and have been stealing from the poor. There has been a sudden increase in Christian ministers who claim to have the prophetic gift. Some of them previously presented themselves as apostles or teachers or evangelists or pastors, but suddenly they became prophets overnight. Yes, one person can operate in all the giftings of the fivefold, but one gift often dominates as their main gift. The Bible itself confirms this in Ephesians 4 verse 11. What we have seen, though, is many ministers abandoning their main calling for the prophetic because it is proving to be more lucrative, especially in South Africa. The Bible says a wicked generation seeks after a sign. Many people are no longer after sound doctrine, but only signs and wonders. Many churches have become theaters, and some preachers have become showmen and women. Because people are fascinated by the prophetic ministry and miracles, there's a shortage, especially of evangelists and teachers. Some ministers have become so desperate that they have even resorted to staging prophecies and faking miracles to maintain a following and to make more money. There is overwhelming proof that many of these well-known prophets pay vulnerable people for them to take part in the staging of prophetic episodes. Many of them have a sophisticated camera system and use a team of contributors to deliver the so-called perfect false prophecy. In the case of miracles, they use various techniques, including chemistry, video editing, and straight-up deception to produce fake miracles. Others use occultic methods and marine powers to prophesy and perform signs and wonders. God obviously does have genuine prophets whom he has appointed, and he also does perform miracles. These miracles, however, occur according to his own will and purpose, not according to the false prophet's desire to entertain and, and manipulate people for prophets and church memberships. It is time for us to swallow the bitter pill that perhaps some of our most beloved ministers are not being true to God's mandate, and that rather money and popularity have captured them. It is a provable fact that most of the biggest churches in Africa are focused on the prophetic than the transformative word of God. Why is that? Could it be that it's because the prophetic is the most profitable niche in Christian ministry? Could it be that fake miracles and false prophets are thriving because of our, because of our society's obsession with instant results? Instead of seeking sound doctrine that will transform us from the core over time, we want instant wealth or instant success. One of the reasons why Africa has remained highly impoverished is because we continue to protect people and not truth. We continue to, pro to protect people even when we can clearly see that those people are not serving us. This is evident in many of our political systems where we remain loyal to corrupt politicians. The context of the church, 
we are so sentimental and ignorant under the banner of you are judging while we protect wolves in sheep's clothing. Some of you are more loyal to humans than you are to God. If Christ himself were to appear and call out some of these people as frauds, some of you will say, no, not my papa. Some of these ministers you are protecting have looted millions and even billions from the poor using God's name. When will it be enough? None of us are perfect, but what endures is our willingness to embrace correction and be willing to change. A generation that relegates correction to judgment is a generation that is on a path of destruction. One of the few bi biblical accounts where Jesus is recorded as having been angry is when the house of God was commodified. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. That is Matthew 21 verse 13. What some of you consider to be churches are nothing but cults and dens of robbers. The government misuses taxpayers' money and has made worse poverty of the people by failing to create a growing and inclusive economy. Some of you have, however, made the situation worse for yourselves because of your ignorance by giving everything you have to some of these charlatans who call themselves prophets. Jesus himself predicted the rise of false prophets towards the end of the age. He mentioned that he will deny them because even though they use his name, he does not know them. Our people's tendency to follow big people instead of following big ideas is a big problem. We follow big political parties instead of following big political ideas. We follow big churches and big church ministers instead of following truth and God's big idea. Maybe the Spirit of God once presided over your church, but has since left because your papa has since been corrupted by power and money. The true Spirit of God may have left your church, but you are still there because you've been trained and brainwashed to follow a person and not God. Just like many politicians of post-94, fake preachers have risen as an elitist class of millionaires while the average churchgoer continues to depend on government grants and constant dose of false prophecies in hopes for a better life.